morning. Good morning. Uh, okay, there we go. Good morning, new creation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can we rejoice this morning? Y'all don't act. Y'all are acting like God didn't turn down the thermostat outside and you know cool y'all down. And we we y'all are excited to be here this morning. I want to thank God for turning the thermostat down outside this morning. We get to experience a little bit of cool weather. It was actually interesting walking out the house this morning and not immediately sweating when we walked out the door. I, I want to thank God for that. I also want to thank God for providing for us. He had fixed the AC in this building. We were able to get that done. There's a lot to be thankful for, and I don't think y'all are ready. I don't, I don't feel the excitement here this morning, but that's all right. I'm going to keep going. Um, and with the announcements, thank you for all of you who are here this morning. Thank you. I feel like I'm fussing, but I'm not. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here this morning. Um, we do have a few quick announcements before we get into. I wanted to. No, let's do our praise reports and our prayer requests first. Praise reports. Any praise reports or prayer requests? Brother Chris. Amen. We will pray for your knee. Um, you got ran over or got hit? That's two different things, Chris. Okay. All right. All right. Well, good. good. I'm glad you didn't get run over. Uh, oh, man. Well, we'll be praying for your knee and the healing. Brother Bobby, pray for me and my family and also pray for our vehicle. We still are without our large vehicle and we are been making do, but it has been a challenge and so pray that wisdom will be found in the mechanic's head to be able to fix our issue um brother nikki i think it was you oh tammy sorry amen amen tammy got a job amen that is awesome we are be praying for you for that uh we also want to be in prayer for brother matt who's uh, we'll be having surgery this week, this Thursday. So be in prayer for him. Um, be in prayer for those who are traveling as well. Um, Sister Akima is traveling this week. Well, uh, sure. Also, be in prayer. We uh, eulogized my cousin on Wednesday. Uh, my mother, oldest brother in St. Louis, passed away on Friday. So mm. be in prayer for the family. We're going to be traveling uh, coming this weekend. So okay. Yeah, Amen. be prayer for you and your family with traveling grace, brother Ray. Okay, we'll be praying for Ray and his family and his son especially, um, brother Chris. Amen. Sometime this week. She may not want to come back. Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, let us be in prayer for your mom as she returns, traveling grace and traveling mercy. Anybody else? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for how you've kept us, how you are keeping us, and how you will keep us. Thank you for always being there for us. Thank you for working out things in our in our path that we don't even see, things that are coming to take, out, take us out, but you have put a hedge of protection around us. Lord, we pray for those grieving this morning. Pray for Sister Sherry and her family. Pray for her mom and those who will be traveling up to St. Louis this weekend. Lord, we pray that you would grab them traveling grace and traveling mercy, that they will get there safely, mourn the loss, celebrate the life, but return back to Texas safely. Lord, we pray for Ray and his family. Lord, we ask that you intervene and touch the hearts and the minds of those involved. Lord, we pray for 
all of the people that are involved in that situation, give them peace. Give them ability to overcome. Lord, we pray for my family, my uh, vehicle that has been held hostage, it feels like. And we pray that you will give the mechanics wisdom that we will be able to um, get back to experiencing and doing life normally with, with our large family vehicle. Lord, we pray for a new creation as a church family and a church body. We thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for those who are traveling, that they have the ability to travel. And, Lord, we pray that you will return them safely. We pray for Ikema and her family as they go to Detroit. We pray that they will return safely. Pray for Chris's mom, who's returning from Jamaica. Pray that he, she will return um, safely. And, Lord, we pray for Chris and as he continues to have issues with his knee. Lord, we pray that you would heal his knee, give him strength, give him grace, give him courage. Lord, that he deals with all the issues now that has come about. It seems like issue upon issue. But, Lord, we know that you can take care of all of that. We pray for Mac, who is having surgery on Thursday. We pray that you will touch the doctor, the surgeon's hand, that you will guide it, that you will... Give him the wisdom he needs to be able to restore Mac's hand to where it used to be. And, Lord, we pray a special prayer for all of these families that are represented here. There are many more prayer requests that went unsaid, Lord, but we, you know them all. And so, Lord, we ask that you intervene as only you can, that we will give you all the honor, glory, and praise. This is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A um, couple of quick announcements. Um, I know last week I, I said July 30, 30th was going to be our anniversary, but we had to change that. The speaker had a, a, a conflict, and I have a conflict. So July 23rd, July 23rd, the fourth Sunday in July will be our church anniversary. Um, and then for the month of July, there will be no Sunday school. We are continuing on no Sunday school for the rest of the month of July, so we won't have Sunday school for this month, but we will be back. We still have Bible study, Tammy. We will still have Bible study for the month of July, but there's just no Sunday school. Then also, yes, this Wednesday we won't have Bible study, but for the rest of the month we will have Bible study. Any, um, and then... Transparency moment. We, I've always stood up here and shared what new creation goes through, the issues or the challenges we go through, and we have a new challenge to, to overcome. As you all know, we had copper thieves steal copper from our uh, building. Well, we were able to get it repaired. We just don't have the money to pay for the repair. Um, and also, our insurance payment, that is a large payment, is coming up in, on the 10th. And so we're asking that you be in prayer about how you may be feel led to support. I, we, it's no coincidence I, it's that I started a series of faith and God has given us an opportunity to test our faith. It's no coincidence that these issues have come up now, and, but we are in need of money. And I'm just going to put it out front. Y'all know I don't do this from the pulpit. But we are in need of money. So we are in need of $5,000. So with that being said, I have full confidence God will provide. There is no shortage in the body of Christ. There is no lack or need in the body of Christ. Uh, but sometimes we try to do everything ourselves. We don't share it. And so the body of Christ doesn't know the need. And so I'm sharing the need that if the Holy Spirit leads you to give towards that need, then by all means, I want you to be a part of this so that God will bless you. But if I just keep it to myself and don't let anybody know, nobody else can participate and God can't use people to help meet the need. This is a biblical precedent. In the Bible, in the New Testament, the church of Jerusalem was suffering. And Paul was going around to other churches raising an offering to give and send to the church of Jerusalem. This is not something new. Just I, you, you never heard new creation do it because we don't 
We don't talk much about giving because you've always give. There's no reason to talk about that. There's no reason because you've always been so excellent and 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 and, and just awesome in your giving. So we just want to raise the need, let everybody know that there is a need, and we hope and pray that you, the Holy Spirit, will lead you to give. I will be given to it. My family will be given to it, as well as um, I'll be reaching out to other churches that we support, see if they will uh, want to participate as well. So we will be sharing this. We'll be posting this on Facebook, um, on our church website, so on our church Facebook page. So if you have a Facebook account, you can share it. Maybe God is leading you to share. I want you to do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Nothing more, nothing less. If the Holy Spirit leads you to give, give. If the Holy Spirit doesn't, the Holy Spirit just leads you to share. Share the post. Whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, that's what I want you to do. And we are going, uh, this is what I want you to know. New creation will be all right. We have, we have, we have, we are celebrating how many years? 22 years. And, 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 and we are blessed this morning to have Brother Sam and Sister Vivian here who are two charter members of New Creation. They have been here from the beginning. And they can tell you all the stories. They can tell you about the Dallas Can Academy. They can tell you about the skating ring. They can tell you about the meeting at Pastor Bell's house. They can tell you all the stories of how God has provided for us. And so we, this is no different. God will provide. But I wanted to share the need with you all and be in prayer that you will maybe led to do something, may not, however it is. But everybody can pray. Everybody can pray. So we want you to all pray for this. I'm also a charter member. That is right. I always, I always forget I'm looking at the picture. Mentally, I'm looking at the picture, and I'm seeing all the people. And you were in the back, wasn't you? Yeah. Yes. Um, but Sister Sherry has been a charter member uh, as well. And so they can tell you all the stories. And, and they know them. And, and there's some things that they don't know that I was privy to that they don't know of how God has provided. And Pastor Bell would share with me. On things we did. This very building, this how we got this building has been is a testimony to God's provision and his 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 grace upon this church. And so we don't take it for granted. This building looks nothing like it did when we got here. And so all of the things that we've been able to do to invest in this building has been a blessing. And we've never been a very large congregation. But God is always providing. He will continue to provide. So we will be all right, but we do have that need. And I can't wait till next Sunday. I'm looking forward to next Sunday when I can get to stand up here and tell you God had provided. And he, we met, and we, he was able to meet our need. All right? So with that, um, our ushers will come and serve us now. If you feel led to give, and this is not just for the, us in here. It's those of you that are watching via Facebook or YouTube. You can go to our church website. Um, if you want, you can put in the comments, AC, and we'll know what that's for. Um, if you want to put it in the offering plate, you can do that. It doesn't matter uh, because New Creation is very transparent in our uh, giving and in our use of our money. And if you have any questions about where the money's going, just ask us. And we'll give you a full accounting of where every dollar and every cent goes. Um, that is available to any member who wants it. Ask, just ask, and we'll provide it for you. Um, and at, so at this time, the, our ushers will lead us and, um, in our giving. Remember, there is uh, behind me four ways you can give. There's, you give via our website, cash out, via text, and um, thank you. And the offering plate, sorry. <laughs> um, so however you feel led to give, let's do so at this time.
we all please stand? Christian, we want to continue our sermon series on portraits of faith. Last week, we talked about Cain and Abel. Last week was Cain and Abel, and I'd like for you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Remember, we're walking through a museum, a, a, a hall of fame, but not just any hall of fame. This is a hall of faith. These are people who have demonstrated God's faith in their lives, and it is evident in their life, and the writer of Hebrews has highlighted them. And we saw last week he highlighted Cain and Abel. He said to, that Cain killed Abel, so we need to be more like Abel and Abel's faith, not like Cain, who didn't trust God and who didn't believe in God. This week, we're going to look at a familiar story, but we're going to pick it up in Hebrews chapter 11, and then we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 6. So Hebrews chapter 11, it says, Now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen is not made out of what is visible. By faith, Abel, had, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life, from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Verse 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. And by his faith, he commended the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Lord, we pray now that you open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. Let it be uh, of encouragement and conviction to our hearts, that we may see areas in our lives that need to be changed, that we may uh, put into practice the things that you are calling us to do. Lord, we see in your word that it says, without faith, it's impossible to please you. And so, Lord, let us understand what faith is and how to put it into practice so that we can ultimately please you. 
in all that we do. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be holy and acceptable in thy sight. My rock, my strength, and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We all grew up, if you grew up anywhere around church, you all know the story of Noah's Ark. It's probably one of the most familiar, probably outside of the creation story, one of the most familiar stories in all of the Bible. It, you, you grow up learning this as a child, but the problem is we don't go back to it as adults. Uh, we, we don't look at it again, and, 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 and he's here, right here in the Hall of Faith. In chapter 11 of Hebrews, and it says, and without faith, about faith, Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, that is, in keeping with faith. So let's turn over, if y'all don't mind, to Genesis. And let's look at the story of Noah's ark one more time. Hopefully we can look at it with fresh eyes. With, 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 with a more mature eye, not, not kids. See, at the highlight of the Noah Ark story is always what? The flood. We always talk about the flood and how the flood destroyed everything and everybody. But I want you to look at Hebrew, Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 5. It said, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. It, it, it shows right here in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 5, that, that, that the world was evil. Wickedness was everywhere. Every thought that the people had was wicked. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but we can look around and see this same thing going on today. We see that, that things that are not biblical and things that lifestyles that aren't in the Bible, that, that are admonitions or unpleasing to God is, is what gets portrayed and pushed out there in the world. And it's evilness everywhere. And it says every thought of the human heart was only evil all the time. Verse 6, look, look what God's response. He said, the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth. Some of your versions might mean, says he, he repented that he had made human beings on this earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of this earth the human race I have created, and with them animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have even made them. Let that sit in for a second. The great creator of this world, the one who created human beings, is looking at his creation and saying, I regret that I even made them. Their lifestyle did not please him. They didn't acknowledge him. They didn't even say thank you, God, when they woke up. They, their, every thought that they had was evil. But verse 8 says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So what did Noah do? Let's keep reading. It says, verse 9, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God saw, said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. And I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make for yourself an ark of cypress wood and make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. And so as we read, because there's a lot to read and a lot to this story, I'm just going to summarize. So Noah gets to work. 
God in the next verse tells him how to build it. He tells him he wants an ark that's built 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Very specific. And God gives Noah exactly what he wants him to do. And Noah gets to, 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 to work. He gets to work. And then verse 23 says, and then he tells him what all he wants in there. He says he wants two of every kind of beast of the field. He wants every kind of animal, two, a male and a female. And then verse 22 says, now Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Let me read that again because this is important. It says Noah did everything just as God has commanded him. Hebrews 11, 7 tells us that, that Noah had holy fear. He had holy fear. Look, let's, I hate to have y'all do this, but mark your places because we're going to go keep going back because Hebrews 11, 7 is our, is, our, is our foundation here. It says he had holy fear. What did he fear? It says he had holy fear and built an ark to save his family. We see right here in Genesis chapter 6, God tells him, I'm going to wipe out all the people of this earth. And I'm going to destroy everything. And I want you to get two animals because I'm destroying all the animals except the two that you bring into the ark. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but if God told me he was going to wipe out the, everybody, I'm going to have a little bit of fear. And, and the Bible calls it a holy fear. People ask me, say, man, your kids are so good. How do you do that? I say, you know, fear is a powerful motivator. I, I, I did. I popped my kids when they were younger. I don't have to hit them now. I got two witnesses in the back that, that, that tell them I, when they were young, I, I laid a foundation and, and I would go ahead and, you know, pop them just a little bit, just a little bit. So they be, have a little bit of fear. I know this is not popular. We might not need to put this on, on Facebook because I might have people knocking at my door. But I did. I, I, because, and then I would tell people that fear is a healthy motivator. And, 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 and if we're truthful about it, Noah had fear. We, if we're truthful, we grew up in a little bit of fear of our parents, too. Our, our parents established a, a level of fear, and some of us are still scared of our parents, and they're up in age. It, 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 it's, it's fear, and, and, and Noah had this holy fear. He called it a holy fear, a righteous fear. He, he was scared of God. And I, I, I want to argue that we've lost some of that holy fear. We've lost some of that fear of who God is. See, see if you go back up, go back up to, to verse uh, 6, it says, And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, number one, but number two, that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. See, in order to have faith, you got to believe in God. In order to believe in God, then you got to believe about who God is. And see, in verse 2, the reason why I read all of Hebrews 11, because some of the previous verses are important. It says, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed by God's, at God's command, so that what is seen is not made of what, is, um, is what was visible. In other words, God is the creator of this earth. And sometimes we lose sight. I admit I'm probably the poster child of forgetting what God, who God is, and, and what God has done and how powerful God truly is. It, it's no coincidence that God, when I started preaching about faith, he's going to give us an opportunity to test our faith. But I know that God is faithful and just and he will do exactly what he says in his word. He's the great creator of this earth. And he can provide for new creation in a drop of a hat. He did it for the disciples. He did it for all the people throughout the Bible. And he can do it for us too. See, we've got to believe in who God is. See, in order to have faith, we've got to believe that he exists. We've got to believe that he is who he says he is. Psalms just keep reminding us of how powerful and how just God is. And we, when we lose sight of that, sometimes our actions dictate and make us do things that we forget. Because then we try to be, play God in our lives. That's what you see with Adam and Eve. 
Adam and Eve tried to play God and said, you know what? I got I know what's best for me. I think this fruit ain't that bad. And because of that decision, every generation got worse and worse and worse. The, the first Cain and Abel, the fruit of their seed, that Cain kills Abel. And, 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 and I said, what do you say? On the way home from church, he kills Abel. They just got through worshiping God and sacrificing to him, and, and Cain kills Abel. And, and then not only that, we see generations after generations of people who got worse. And, and then the Bible says that they were so evil, every thought was evil, that God looked at them and said, I just, I just want to wipe them out. I, I just want to start over, and I'm going to start over with Noah because Noah pleased God. I wonder what God is thinking about us right now. I wonder what God thinks about our generation right now. Do we live our lives pleasing him? Are we living our lives in a way that God will be proud of and pleasing? It would be pleasing to him. It, just like with, with Abraham and Lot, it, it, Lot was, if I could just find just, 50 people, if I could just find 10, it, he had to keep going down. And I wonder if, 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 if God showed up, if he could find enough people that would please him. A, Noah had a holy fear of God. You know why sometimes I feel like we don't have holy fear? Because sometimes we don't know that what is happening to us is because of what God is punishing us for. I, I, I said this before, you know, if we had an immediate consequence for when we sin, it would be better to understand that that was God punishing us. It's just like with our kids. If I see my kid with a, with a knife stick, about to stick it into the light socket, I'm going to immediately hit his hand and, 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 and make sure that he doesn't do that. And especially if they're young. See, see, you can't reason with a baby. Um, Josh, Jasmine, y'all can't reason with, with toddlers. They, you can't. It's, it's impossible. That you can't reason with them. So, so the only thing that they understand is what? Pain. That's why you pop. You pop because you love them. And it, it's okay to pop your child so they can understand not to do something that's going to be, that's going to hurt them worse. And, and that's what we lose because we think it's all about corporal punishment, but it's not. It's about love. And if we had a holy fear of God, if we got immediately popped every time we did something wrong, it would, it would change the way we act. But God is orchestrating things. It, and he works things out that we can understand that those sins are, are okay because he works them out for our good. But but. Noah had a holy fear. But not only that, he built an ark to save him. And, and, and I want, in Genesis, you see, it said he did exactly what God commanded him to do. He, he, didn't, he didn't do some of what God commanded him to do. He did exactly what God commanded him to do. See, in order for us to have wisdom, and the reward that comes in verse 6 of Hebrews 11. It says, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In to order to earnestly seek him, we have to be obedient. Just like we see with Noah. Noah did exactly what God commanded him to do. He built the ark exactly the way he did it. And you know what the interesting thing about? It, it says, he, had, he didn't even see this coming. He didn't know a flood was coming. He knew that God was going to destroy the earth and destroy all the people. But he had never seen a flood. He, he didn't know it would happen. And the other thing that's interesting about this is it took, some, some scholars believe it took anywhere between 70 to 100 years for him to build this ark. Can you imagine being faithful to God that long and every day? doing exactly what God has called you to and doing com being completely obedient to what he says to do. That's what Noah displays here. And then not only that, it says 
he was able to save his whole family. I dropped by to let you know, some, some of our families are waiting on our faith. Some of our families are waiting on us to live by faith in God, to, to admit and to recognize that he exists and to walk out on faith, not being able to see what's going to happen, not knowing what the end's going to be, but trusting that God will provide. That's what Noah did. Noah didn't know what the end, but it, it ended up that he built this ark, brought his three sons in there with their wives, and he was able to save his whole family. But it also says that Noah, by faith, condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. He condemned the world. And that's an interesting way to put it. By faith, he condemned the world. He did it because he was able to please God in how he lived. And because he pleased God and he lived a holy and, and righteous life, God was able to say, see, y'all should have been living like Noah. And because you didn't live like Noah and you wasn't pleasing to me, he condemned the world. It's in how he acted. It's in how he lived that Noah makes a mark. See, we all get caught up in the flood, in the rainbow. But we forget how God provided and extended grace to Noah. You know, you know God could have fully well said, I'm going to wipe out everybody, and I'm just going to start over. Adam number two and Eve number two. God is that powerful. Y'all knew, no, he could do that. The creator of this universe could have said, I'm going to start all over and, and wipe this slate clean. But he just said, no, there's one that's has faithful. There's one that is exhibiting faith. I'm going to establish my covenant through him. And that's what he did. And we're all here and blessed because of the faith of Noah. And it says that Noah, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that is keeping with faith. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for, the assurance of things we don't see. There are things that's going to come up in your life that you're not going to see coming. But faith tells you to keep going forward because God told you to move forward. Faith, faith is to be patient. And, and, and this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Faith is every day waking up, asking God, what is it that you will have for me to do today? It's not, a, it's not a just come to church on Sunday type faith. It's, it's not just attend Bible study. It's faith that lasts for a while. Now, I want, do want to stop by and tell you Noah was no perfect man. Uh, when he, he when after the flood happened and he gets on dry land, the first thing he does is plant a vineyard. And, 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 and you know why he planted a vineyard? Because because he liked the fruit of the vine, if y'all know what I'm talking about. He liked to drink. He, he, he got drunk. He got so drunk one time, he, he was laying without any clothes on in his tent, and his, his youngest son comes in and catches him and sees him naked. He, that, that, that's the Noah that distributed, this, distributed, demonstrated faith. That's the Noah that we're talking about. See, he wasn't perfect, and neither, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect, but, but he, he was perfect in the sense that he had holy fear and he knew who God was. And he knew what God could do. And you know the thing? M many scholars have argued about how long this flood lasted. See, we think the flood, how many, you, we grew up thinking, and I thought this, and I don't, you, I don't know, you might not, you might be more biblically astute than I am, uh, but I thought the flood only lasted 40 days and 40 nights. But, 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 that was just the rain. That was just the rain. If you add up all of the time frames that they give, because they give you how old Noah was when he went into the ark, and they tell you how old he was when he came out the ark, that flood lasted for 371 days. 
Noah was on a ship on the ark for 371 days. See, faith isn't something that's just a short-term fix. Faith is a lifestyle. And if faith has to lead to obedience, because if it doesn't lead to obedience, then it's not true faith. In Noah's life, we see that he was obedient to God. He was completely obedient to God. If you go back and look at look at Genesis and look at all the times it says that Noah was obedient. Noah was did what exactly what he said. We'll see it in Genesis 7, 5. We'll see it all throughout the seventh chapter of Genesis where it says he was obedient. See, if faith leads you not to do anything, that's not real faith. Faith without works is dead. And we see here faith led to Noah being obedient and building an ark when he had never seen a flood. Knowing that God was going to destroy all the people and all the animals of this earth. But he did it because God told him to. Faith is trusting God when it doesn't make any sense. Faith is trusting that God will provide for you when you don't see a way he can Faith is trying not to put God in a box, but letting God be God and us be us. In other words, we try to define and make God who we want him to be. And that he has to work in our lives the way we want him to work. Instead of allowing God to work the way he's going to work. And having faith that he's going to work that situation out for your good. See, that's what faith does for your life. Faith, this life that... I'm asking us to live by faith isn't an easy life. It has hard times. It has 100 plus years of building an ark and you haven't seen a flood. It has times where you're going to be in a situation for time after time, floating around on on the sea and not knowing when you're going to hit dry land. That's faith. Noah didn't know what the end was going to look like, but he did exactly what God called him to do. And because of that, the the world and everybody else was blessed because of Noah. Faith has a long reach. Faith can, 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 can bless generations after us. If we are faithful, our generations of people can be faithful and blessed because of our faith that we exhibit right now. This isn't something to play with. This isn't something that's just trivial. This is the very foundation of our Christianity. Believing in God. Believing that God is the creator and the sustainer of this universe. Now, when you put your problem up against that God who's the creator of this universe, that, that God that, that established everything, that God that, that, that made each and every one of us so intricate and so complicated that we still can't figure out the human brain. We still can't figure out all on how the body works. We still trying to figure out how diseases attack our body and how cancer puts us down. We can't cure cancer. But, but, but we know the one who created us. So whatever the problem is, whatever the issue is, if the God of this great universe is that big that is he you, we can't even fathom him all in our in, in our finite minds because our finite minds can't contemplate and and wrap our heads around an infinite god what little problem do we have that he can't solve what little issue do we have that he can't work out And all he's asking for us is to be, to live by faith, to trust him. It's just like every parent wants their kid to trust them. Every kid, every parent knows what's best for that kid. Just like that, that same thing, God wants us to trust him that he will provide for us. He will take care of all of these issues. He just wants us to do one thing, and that's to live by faith. 
And in order to live by faith, you got to know the word of God. In order to live by faith, you got to know what he's asking you to do. In order to live by faith, you got to know who he is. See, it's not hard for African Americans, I noticed that, to, to, to recognize who God is. We grew up culturally and a lot of times in or around or close to a church. But that doesn't mean that faith has gotten in us. Because we can rely on ourselves and our ability to try to work our way out of situations. And I can guarantee you, it, it may work for a little while. But there's going to come a situation that's going to come in your life. There's going to come a sickness that's going to come in your life. And then you're going to look and you're going to say, God, I need you. I, I can't do this anymore. And God has a way of breaking us. It, 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 I, I would love, I would love to be one of those preachers that could just want to give you a warm and fuzzy saying, oh, it's going to be all right. And God's going to bless you. He's going to give you everything you hope for. But God wants more than that. He wants obedience. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. He wants obedience. He wants us to be obey him. And, 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 and obedience sometimes comes with sacrifice. Obedience comes sometimes through hard situations. Obedience is tough sometimes. And, and we've got to understand that it's for our good. See, we'll, we'll see later in this chapter that not all of the people who live by faith got to see the fruit of their faith. It was, it was shown after in generations past, after them. And, 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 and we might not see the fruit of our faith either. But one thing we will see, just like Noah, when he inherited a new earth, the, the, a, God completely destroyed the earth and he inherited, he was an heir of all, a new earth. We're going to inherit a new earth too, a new heaven and a new earth. For those who believe in him. See, we do get the reward for being faithful. We will get the fruit of being faithful, but we may not see the down here the fruit of that labor. So don't give up. The Bible says don't grow weary in well-doing because in due time you will receive a crown. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for life. And how you showed us that, how he lived by faith. He first had a holy fear of you. Lord, we ask that you just renew our fear of you. That you could wipe out this world and start all over if you see fit. Lord, we thank you that the promise and the covenant that you made to Noah. We thank you for delivering him and him being on the boat and on the water for 371 days and how you kept him. Chapter 8 starts out with saying, but God remembered Noah. And, and that's just awesome to know that you never forget about us. You're always there for us. You're working things out that we don't even have an idea about. You're working our path out that we can just walk in it. So, Lord, give us the faith to live for you. Give us the faith to trust you. Give us the faith to give everything over to you. Because we know that you are more than able to provide and to, to, to protect and to do everything that we are too feeble in ourselves to do. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. And, Lord, we not only thank you for what you've done, we thank you for what you will do in our lives. Lord, help us to live by faith. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um,